I probably shouldn't make this video, but I have to because ChatGPT is such an exciting product. So my students uh, at my college, we've been using ChatGPT for the last three years. And it's so fun if you and your students are using it together, you know, openly with transparency. And uh, I have to talk about ChatGPT, the four modes, a survival guide. So here's how, here's how I want to start this presentation. There was this lumberjack. He was jacked, man. His name was Paul Bunyan. He was famous. He, he could uh, chop down trees. He got replaced by the electric chainsaw because the electric chainsaw could effortlessly cut down more trees in five minutes than Paul Bunyan could do in a full day. And uh, the power of AI, the power of ChatGPT, to produce academic content, to produce entertainment content, it's, it's, um, it's so exponential in its growth that there are predictions that people who have my type of job will be sent early to retirement. I mean, according to the speculation, I could be... Um, I could be in a condo in Miami, retired, you know, driving around in one of those pastel golf carts and uh, doing uh, aerobics in the swim pool, the heated pool out by Miami. Hasn't happened yet. I've not been retired yet by ChatGPT. Uh, ChatGPT is not going away. The toothpaste is out of the tube. We're not putting it back in the tube. We have to uh, learn how to use it uh, responsibly. And I'm not even here to, to say anything bad about it, actually. I, I find it fascinating, which I'll go into. But if you're a student, it can be so seductive. It could be like a magic wand. Oh, all my problems, you know, have been solved with ChatGPT. So I just want to go over the four modes that uh, my students and I have been uh, interrogating in the last two or three years. And uh, some of the modes you want to stay away from. Let's, uh, let's talk about uh, the first mode. I call this blank slate mode. Uh, this is uh, for those of you who have real struggles with your time management. Your time management's awful. You're on your smartphone all the time and you have an essay due. Let's do the next day. You got nothing. You haven't done any. You didn't read the assignment. You didn't read any of the uh, related essays. You didn't read the text. You didn't read the short story. You didn't think about it. You didn't do pre-writing. You didn't brainstorm. <laughs> you didn't come up with a thesis. You did nothing. Well, you did one thing. You went on the syllabus and you copy and pasted the uh, professor's essay writing prompt. You put it in the ChatGPT box and uh, you told it to write you an essay and then you press the enter button and that's called blank slate mode that mode oh man where, where, where can I begin okay spoiler alert that mode is the use of ChatGPT that we call in uh, discussions of academic honesty plagiarism but it's worse than that it's not only plagiarism the essays are awful and they're obviously stolen what happens when you do the blank slate mode first of all it's lame because you went to a takeout restaurant and then you told people uh, that you made the food from scratch so it's just lame from that point of view but it's worse than that when you use blank slate mode ChatGPT is not an effective writer it um, it will use stock phrases and cliches over and over again and so in my in my four classes that I teach let's say uh, 20 students do blank slate mode their essays will all have the same <laughs> the same uh, uh, the same stock phrases you know as we delve into the uh, into the complex interplay of delve into the complex interplay of I've seen over a hundred times in my essays and I know it's ChatGPT. now we have software that catches that so so it, it's just awful the essays are awful you know what's crazy about those blank slate essays I don't even have to put them in the ChatGPT uh, checker I already know that they were um, that they were done in blank slate mode so um 
that's plagiarism, but that's one mode. Let's go into another mode. This mode's interesting. Here, I'm going to call it uh, pedicure mode. A pedicure. You know, you um, here's what you did. You went through the writing process. You you read the assignments. You read the the main essay or the main story, or if it was a small book, because who assigns big books these days? And uh, you went through the pre-writing, the brainstorming, came up with your own thesis. You wrote the text. You wrote your own uh, signal phrases and in-text citations. And you analyzed your own quotes and paraphrases and summaries. Here's where ChatGPT does really f great work. It's a, it's a better rewriter than it is uh, a blank slate writer. Here, let's say you, you uh, copy and pasted your entire essay that you wrote in your own words, and then you write in the, uh, the box, the ChatGPT box, rewrite the above document, correcting for grammar errors, sentence structure errors, and produce in a uh, academic tone <laughs> suitable for a college essay. That's a pedicure. Everyone does that. Even if you're not using ChatGPT, Grammarly can do a lot of stuff like that. Grammarly will elevate your style a little bit, and it will uh, fix the grammar and the sentence structure. That's a that's like a, a pedicure or a manicure, just a little light makeover. Um, while colleges and universities have no universal policy for ChatGPT and plagiarism in this, it's pretty safe. It's a pretty safe mode. I suspect that a lot of professors would want to see your original draft and they'd want to see your ChatGPT pedicure draft. That's a very possible scenario, so be prepared to do that. But I don't think there are any ethical problems using ChatGPT that way. I think it's going to be used that way uh, in academics and business for years to come. And uh, I think that's a pretty safe mode, the uh, pedicure mode. Now we get into something fascinating. I call this Incredible Hulk mode. Here, ChatGPT is not just uh, a little editor, you know, revising your work. Here, you and ChatGPT are co-writers. You're in this intense collaboration and you're rewriting back and forth. And you're taking your scrawny little prose and you're using ChatGPT to hulk it up. You're morphing it into the Incredible Hulk. I call this Incredible Hulk mode. In this mode, sometimes ChatGPT will make references to ancient Greek mythology uh, or uh, you know ancient philosophy, things you might not even know about. And, and then you, you sound like this erudite uh, professor. And now it, it gets more questionable. What, you, you gave out a hulked out uh, essay, uh, you know, it's like a bodybuilding contest. It was supposed to be the natural uh, Mr. America, and uh, you know, some people were juiced, man. Some people were so juiced on tons of PEDs. I don't know. You know what I should have called this mode? Not incredible. I should have called this Liver King mode because Liver King claimed to be uh, natural ancestral uh, living. He's sort of the Chachi BT bod of the modern age. Liver King, don't do that. So, uh, man, Hulk mode, here's the thing about Hulk mode. I'm not even against it. If, if you're having a transparent dialogue with your professor about how you're using it, I don't even know if it's the best thing for you in an academic college essay. I find Hulk mode when you're, when, uh, when you're really amplifying and muscling up your prose, it works better for comedy for satirical fiction. So I don't even know if it's effective in the classroom, but I just want to let you know, uh, of all the modes that we discussed, that's the one I'm most fascinated by uh, because uh, it's I've used it in that mode for, uh, I've taken uh, like family trips that were just, okay, let me give you an example. We, we went to Mammoth Lakes and we stopped at a, uh, at a McDonald's in Mojave. And they had those uh, combination locks on the bathrooms. And I had to get the combination. I was I was upset about it, you know. I had to like, you know, I spent $50 on my family for crummy food at McDonald's. At least you could give me the combination locks. And then uh, I had this 
idea of like these these truck drivers come in they're out they have to go to the bathroom and uh i was giving them the code so I was like, don't worry anyways I, I i put this whole scenario in ChatGPT, and i wanted to make it this funny narrative it even though my original narrative as i wrote it was funny ChatGPT was amazing and and the thing is it 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 reinvented the whole experience at the mojave mcdonald's in a way that surprised me and i love surprises i love seeing things in a new way and so when i experienced and i did that hundreds of times i just gave you one example of where i'll take a, a funny scenario with myself or my family or whatever or even with my students and then ChatGPT will kind of like uh, put it through the wash machine and it will come out in a way that I never admit. So I think there's a lot of potential for ChatGPT. But uh, if you use it that way, you got to be transparent with your uh, with your instructor. And I, I love doing that with ChatGPT. I love talking about a TV show that I watch with my wife and and um, and putting my uh, impression. Oh, I love doing a Breaking Bad TV review and then having ChatGPT rewrite it in a satirical way. So um, Hulk mode is the most fascinating one, but it's also morally dubious if you're a student and you're turning in a Hulk essay to your instructor. All right, uh, the final mode is translation mode. Okay, I, I, I teach in Los Angeles. This is the most cosmopolitan city in the world. And uh, I have students from Germany, France, Mexico, Japan, Korea, China, Jordan, you name it. And English is not their first language. And they, some of them tell me, McMahon, I, I write it, I write the essay in my first language, and then ChatGPT translates it for me. Well, man, you better talk to your instructor uh, about uh, that in terms of uh, plagiarism. I don't even think uh, universities have a, um, a universal policy or colleges have a universal policy for translation mode, but that's the fourth mode of, uh, in fact, I need to talk about that at some of our meetings. What, what are we going to do with that mode? Because we have uh, hundreds and thousands of international students who use that mode. Now, um, it's easy to be seduced by ChatGPT. What I've learned is that the more you put into it, the more you put your own writing into it, and the more effort you put into it, the more it gives back to you. The, the more you're lazy with it and just want it to do all the work for you, the more um, bland and boring and cliche larded uh, it, it works. It doesn't work that way. So I'll be honest with you. If you, if you really want ChatGPT to be... Um, working at its highest level, you actually have to do more work than if you weren't even using ChatGPT because the collaboration process can be intense. I wanna uh, give you guys a trap. Here's a trap. <sighs> First of all, technology changes our brains. And uh, I used to read like two novels a week when I was in college because I didn't have technology. I just read books. I just had hard copies of books. And over the last 20 years, I've become more stupid. I'm just telling you guys the truth. My brain has lost IQ points because I've been grazing on um, social media, little little bites of, and it's just awful for the soul. It's just awful. It polarizes us. And I know it is, and I've tried to cut back. But my brain has changed. And so what happens is when you have a technology and it becomes your crutch and you become dependent on it, you become weak in ways you don't even know you're weak until it's too late. So let me give you a scenario. Let's say uh, you do well uh, in, in, uh, for your first two years of college. And then uh, your third year, you know, you've transferred somewhere and the professor wants a blue book. Do you guys know what a blue book is? Do we still even use that language? The professor says, I want to separate those of you who can write both in class and out of class by giving a blue book midterm in class writing exam with no phones, no ChatGPT, no technology, and a final. Because those of you who can write in class will get A's and those of you who can't get whatever. I don't know, man. What if what if ChatGPT gave you a false sense of security 
and a, a dependence that you didn't even know about. And then when asked to do an in-class uh, writing assignment, it's going to be graded, especially if it's going to be graded heavily. You would be really in a bad place. Ooh. And I, I feel like if I wasn't giving you that warning, I wouldn't be responsible. So, uh, ooh, that's rough, man. You know, here's the thing, man. In act, ChatGPT is too powerful to fail. I mean, I hate to say this, but the world operates on a cash revenue stream and efficiency and expediency. And so ChatGPT is not going to go away. It's going to become part of our lives. You know, imagine you're a, you're a district manager at Banana Republic and you got to write uh, memos to your employees. You're going to spend uh, two hours writing these memos. You're going to have ChatGPT help you do it in five minutes because uh, saving almost two hours is money, man. So I, it's not going to go away. So is your instructor before they retire me? to a condo in Miami where I'm doing uh, water aerobics in the heated pool. I want to interrogate the uses of ChatGPT in ethical, responsible, and effective ways. There's a lot of moving parts. A lot of things I say aren't even definitive. Things are going to change, so i got to do updated videos on this uh, process. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for listening to this uh, what I hope to be a uh, intriguing exploration of ChatGPT in the four modes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, I'm out.